you heard that. Okay, and now back to share screen. Um, anyway, so here's what we do here. Um, like I said, you know, can continue. We'd love to get to know you, have a record of it. I really appreciate Sky doing it. Uh, also, I did earlier today, and you've helped clarify it, um, our survey is again, I'm really trying to get to know you and tweak the class this is the first time I've done it. And you've already kind of went over all of that, that we're from all over different things. Uh, and we know where you come from. And look at that split. Everybody's evenly divided on where they're coming from and what, what do you want to do? And that really helps me because um, I'll probably end up taking a more general approach rather than a total science heavy approach. So that's kind of the point. We'll go to from the top. Here's the blah, 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 yada, yada, yada part. Okay, you may have seen this already, but here is the basic syllabus. We're online and all that. You see, I'm actually live and in person before my uh, 1215 class, but if you're around, always like to say hello. Environmental policy information, it's, it's really broad. And see, truth be told, this class, class was taught for many years by Dr. David Saxman, who passed of COVID at about this time last year. So we've been kind of letting it float for a while. Um, since I've done this before, I volunteered to take it on, and I've taken a bit more of a different approach. In the past, it was like, do the readings, do take a test, do a research paper. I'm finding, and I think this fits with you, and I'm willing to adjust, kind of helping you do a little bit more of the nuts and bolts with you know news stories, um, press releases, uh, uh, broadcast scripts, and ultimately you can do, and we'll get to that, a, a research paper or a media package that, <laughs> that you can show a potential employer. Anyway, learn, student learning outcomes. This is like serious stuff we do here. Um, this is, is the goals of the course. Uh, understanding the role of communication professionals, enable you to deliver effective, accessible, which means like understandable communication to diverse audiences because not everybody looks at this stuff as you were saying, I, I, I think it was Sky who was saying that you have some audiences who are more receptive than others. For example, a friend of mine who shall remain nameless in biology was told by student affairs, she should not use the term climate change to general audiences because it makes them upset. Well, gee golly gosh, that's something we have to deal with. So. So yes, those are issues we'll have to deal with. Uh, produce related research and scholarship. We'll do some of that. And again, we don't have anybody who's uh, registered for the graduate school part of this, but those of you who are more uh, scientifically oriented, you will have that option. Rather than do a media package, you could go in depth on a research topic. Anyway. Okay, okay, works materials. We have one book so far. Uh, Dr. Saxman used several, but this is the only one that frankly has arrived at the bookstore. So we can look through that. And it's the, the, the beginning of it's pretty good, actually. It talks about the issues we're all talking about here dealing with science. Uh, technology requirement. Yeah, well, you know, we're online. Uh, COVID, if you are sick, let us know. You know that's the big thing. You know, and when we'll work with you on it. Uh, doo -doo -doo, tech support helpful. All right. Here's here's the stuff you really people care about. Pretty much almost every week or every other week, we'll have a short assignment. 
100 points a piece, 700 points. Short quizzes, um, that too. We had, I don't think we have one. We don't have one this week. We'll probably do it next week. Uh, you know, 10 points a piece. And I will give you the answer to the quiz if you just show up. Otherwise, it's in the reading and you got to do it on your own. Uh, final product, project, or paper. Total 1,000 points. Final project will be a media package for a real life project, including media plan and appropriate news stories, press releases. I heard people wanted to do PR, video, podcast, and PowerPoint presentation, or a research paper of around 3,000 words, 10 pages, and at least five outside sources on a communicated relation issue. Those of you who want to go to grad school or law school, this may be your best option because law school, it, you know, you're going to do a lot of research. They like to look at such things as you've already done some. That gets you a leg up into law school or grad school. FYI. Yeah, I usually get back I assignments within a week. What I often do is I will, as soon as they, you know, beginning of, uh, of the Tuesday class, I'll go over some of the strengths and weaknesses of the assignments from the previous week. And, and, and you know, we can talk about that before I, I actually put a grade on it. Uh, okay, course policy, five point deduction a day for late work. Extensions may be granted for notification before the deadline. This is one of those sort of like, in college, we're not just learning communications, math, and science. We're learning how to be responsible. And, you know, the hardest thing, you know, but we know stuff happens. So the most difficult thing that happens if, if you get sick or you have a family issue, um, and then you disappear for two weeks and then come back two weeks later and go, uh, well, that's not good. Because in the real world, you disappear for two weeks from work and you're going to lose your job. And it's just a good habit to get into is to be responsible. And by responsible, what I mean is you're sick, something happens, give me an email, you know, call, message me, you have all my contact information and say, hey, I have a personal problem. I'm sick. You get the extension. If you disappear, then I take off the points. My favorite one still is, uh, favorite excuse still is, I didn't know all that marijuana was in the car. And when I opened the truck, oops, and the person had uh, called me from jail actually <laughs> uh but yes at least she called so you know it she was responsible at least in some ways but anyway uh again let me know before class if you have any problems where's the next okay bookstore all that other stuff come on oh here it is all right uh and here's a calendar, or what we do. Things will change because this is the first time I've done it. Course information, and I'll talk about the, the, the book and the lecture. People ask me, um, do I need to read the, to buy the book? The answer is really, it's up to you. I follow the book, it's a useful resource. Uh, it will come up in the assignments, but I'm not gonna sit here and go on page 34 and then ask that on a test. This is a senior level class. We're not gonna do that. This is a seminar. It's up to you, but it is a useful thing. Uh, and then we tell you course learning objectives, how each assignment relates with what we're trying to do in class. That's kind of a thing we try to do. Uh, again, translating science, first story, I have, a a research article 
and I'd like you to turn it into a news story. I think most of you have had to have a writing course before this. So this will help me um, gauge where you are by the way. Uh, I should have mentioned that earlier. You can give me a draft of the assignment before you hand it in. I mean, you can send it in and I'll go over it. Well, maybe you could do this out of the other way. I'll edit it for you. And you could always give me an early draft. It is due uh, this Friday. So you have a few days. Uh, next week, news versus advocacy and opinion. Public relations and opinion. And then we talk about a press release next week for those of you so inclined. Then broadcasting and a broadcast script. And I wrote a um, textbook on this, or at least I edited a really fun one. So I'll have, I will make copies and upload them. You don't have to buy the book. Uh, environmental science, you know, uh, oh, social media, how do we deal with social media? Uh, we'll start with a media plan, campaigns, uh, end of, at the end, once we get a little bit of the communication part down, then we'll relate that to um, issues we face, you know, climate change, pollution, all of that, environmental research. Okay, environmental issues, research, government policies, and the media. Okay, fall break, woo woo, we're a Tuesday, so we don't have class. Activism local issues and actually I'll do a little about that on a demonstration today some of the big things you know people talk about climate change but you know what does that how does that affect us here in um in the in chattanooga in the southeast tennessee so i'll ask you just right off the top anybody how does climate change have an effect locally? Anybody? I have one. I go to the farmer's market. Uh, here, it's, it's really cool every, um, every Sunday. There are fewer peaches. Why? Because, because of climate change, we have warmer winters. So the peaches flower early, but then invariably there will be a freeze mid late March. The, the, the freeze knocks all the flowers off the trees. So there are much fewer peaches. As a matter of fact, Georgia is no longer the peach state. You know who's making more peaches? Virginia because it's a little cooler. The flowers don't bloom as early there. They bloom later. So they're not, there's not little peaches on the trees if they get a freeze. So right there, a local effect of climate change. Anyway, see, so it really does affect us. Uh, local issues, guest speaker, I'll have somebody, I think I know who I'm gonna have in, but nothing. Um, you know, what we'll do is I'll have the person in and then you listen and you'll do a news story. Uh, final projects, last couple of weeks, and the last thing you do, projects, not Orjox, uh, Friday, December 2nd, and no real fun. So we're done. That is the course. It's so what I like to do. I, w I went through all the blah, blah, blah. There's a kind of a short version of the important things people care about. What we do, here's me, learning outcomes. This is what we're, you're supposed to get out of the course. Here's, again, assignments. Rating, okay, this is something I didn't have earlier. 
grading for like essays and writing. Now, we don't do pluses and minuses. Canvas doesn't allow me to give you 105 out of 100. So uh, I saved that last five points for extra credit above and beyond. Good sources, longer stuff, you go above and beyond, you get the A plus. Uh, really, really good, you know, couple outside sources, all well done. That's still an A, you know, that's an A is a, there's no difference in your GPA between the 95 and 100. So that's where I saved that for. A minus, also no difference between that and the 100. But when we do the final calculations, it may make a difference. You know, maybe a little fat one factual error there, uh, you know, B, more than one fat, for outside sources, failure to save the source, to cite sources. Uh, B, you have a clue, but more stuff wrong. C, at least you hand something in. This is the biggest killer of grades is you don't hand stuff in or you handle it in, or you hand it in weeks late without asking for an extension. So, I mean, a C, is better than a zero. Classes, here's how the classes run. Doing that right now, introduction, preview of upcoming events. <clears throat> Usually, let's face it, you're going to lose interest, certainly by 60 minutes. So then we let, let, then we stop for discussion or workshop stuff, asks a question, and then I'll leave just the thing open for a while. You can ask questions, give me a draft of what you're doing, that sort of stuff. So that's that's how the class runs. And here's the same calendar as I had before. What else we got? We already did that. Here's grading. And all right. Here's a class invitation survey. Okay. I will always have what I call class notes. I will, whatever I talk about, I'm going to back up. You'll have the notes. So in case you mix class or you want to review something, it's here for you. This is an important thing that we do on an online class. I want to make sure you have all the information. And we may as well start the show. Ta-da! All right, here's what we do for those of you. Oop, wrong class. Oops, I hate that. Uh, hold on, I have that. It's always something. I hate when I do that. Um, I have that on my laptop. Give me a second. I did a lot of work on this. I just composed these on another computer and I had the wrong file. And here it is right in front of me on my laptop. And As you can see, online is not my favorite animal. Prove that I'm still here. Okay. Oh, 
Well, that's why I uploaded it from desk from desktop and not documents. Theorem is okay. Until here's the right one. Remove the bad one in case I do this course again. All right. Here's what we really do. Only took a minute. All right. Okay. Environment. Okay. We'll start with an overview of environmental issues. We think some of the details that make Thursday Boots most special are the ones that you can't see. Hey everyone, I'm Connor, one of the... It's simply important that we study the... I played it all the way through. This is AP Environmental Science Video 1. It's the first in a series of videos for AP Environmental Science which is the study of the interactions between the systems of the earth and the human systems. And I remember visiting Shanghai and looking across the bond and thinking, wow, we have so many people on our planet. We're pushing well beyond 7 billion. That's gonna put pressure on the earth and understanding how that works is incredibly important. And so AP Environmental Science will study the interactions between the natural systems and the human systems. So we'll begin with the earth itself and then we'll move through living systems. And finally, we'll get to the populations that make up human systems. The rest of the course will be dedicated to the interactions between these two worlds. And so we'll begin with land and water use, then energy, finally pollution and climate change. Now, since this is a science course, it's incredibly important that we study the practices of science. What did I like this because it shows the issues we're all dealing with and it divides it all into we all talk about climate change, but all of this and we'll even show that as a demonstration today is to be an environmental scientist. And so this is the outline for the course. We'll begin with the earth, we'll move through climate change, but we're gonna deal with the practices throughout. Now, what's most important to us as humans are the human populations. And so to live within those boundaries, it's important that we understand the concept of sustainability. What happens when you outstep those boundaries? Well, we could look to Easter Island for an example. We used to have a flourishing population there, but what happened was deforestation. They put pressure on the island itself and their population dropped off dramatically. And so as we study environmental science, we'll deal with very important figures but I see, that's what happened on Easter Island. They cut down all the trees to make fires to cook and there were no more trees left and they couldn't cook anymore. That is what also happened in Ireland and Scotland. They cut down all the trees and they had to change their agriculture. But I wanted to begin with a very important figure named Rachel Carson, and she really brought us into the modern age of environmental science. Her study of DDT and the negative consequences of that, which are illustrated in her books. The first big environmental book, I think it was 1962, about how pollution destroyed a lot of the habitats. What it, uh, DDT did for birds is it made the shells of their eggs thinner. So birds would lay on the eggs and break the eggs and birds would not reproduce. Silent Spring really brought that to the forefront of our minds. What are we doing and how are we impacting the environment itself? And so this is an environmental science course. And so like any other science course, we're gonna deal with the scientific method. Now, sometimes students will confuse that term with environmentalism. Now that's going to be a belief system. So we are going to lobby officials and try to get laws passed that protect the environment. That's not environmental science. Environmental science is looking for that truth of how- That's another thing I like about this video. Environmental science doesn't say what we should do. It says, hey, this is happening. What we should do about it, that's a matter of politics. And an environmentalist has a certain idea of what we should do about environmental issues. Business people and politicians may have other viewpoints. And that's where communications comes in. Do you want to be an activist and promote something? Or do you want to 
just give folks the basic facts and let them decide. One's not better than another, but that's the difference between activism and journalism. Activism promotes a viewpoint, journalism should not. How we can interact with the environment. So maybe in the future, science will say that DDT is an important tool that we could use to fight malaria. Then we have to follow that pathway. And so why is this course important? Well, when I was young, people used to wear t-shirts that said, save our planet. And it's kind of a funny shirt because the planet, the earth is gonna do fine. It's how we do on that planet that's important to us. And so a better slogan is save our society. And why is that a big deal right now? Well, we're studying to exceed some what have been coined planetary boundaries by Johan Rockström and his group at the Stockholm Resilience Center. And so if we look at this model, we look at all the things that are affecting the earth that can then affect society. And so the one that you're probably familiar with is climate change. But we also have ocean acidification. We have ozone depletion. Yep. We have changes in biogeochemical cycling, increases in nitrogen and phosphorus. We have fresh water use or the availability of fresh water, deforestation, biodiversity loss, particle pollution, and chemical pollution. And so what they've done is said, how can we exist within the safe boundaries of the earth? So on this model, if we say the blue represents where we can safely live, this yellow dot represents where humanity was pre-industrialization. Before the Industrial Revolution and the spread of industry around the world, these were our... Yeah, and this is what I like about this video. It shows pretty much almost any of the environmental issues we face could be fit under these basic uh, guidelines. And here it is. Our levels. But now if we look at where we are as far as those boundaries, as far as climate change, we are increasing the climate, the temperature. And as a result, we're gonna have consequences that are beginning to affect society and will continue to affect society. We're looking at a three degree increase, um, which is incredible. But if we look at these other ones, ocean acidification, ozone depletion, or increase in the amount of nitrogen in the biosphere, phosphorus, if we look at fresh water use, deforestation, biodiversity loss, there's a lot of scientists saying we are headed into the sixth ex extinction. And another thing I like about this, it shows you the extent of where we are on a lot of these issues. Yes, we're kind of out of the safety zone and climate change, but look at biodiversity. I mean, it's not just, you know, it's not just big animals, it's small ones, it's insects, it's um, microorganisms. And that's really affecting pretty much everything. Nitrogen, again, that goes, with that, that goes into our agriculture. The plants need that to grow. We're exhausting that and flushing it into the uh, ocean. And then we have soil depletion. So this shows lots of things that's going on all around us. That caused by humans. Now we don't have good models for pollution, but if you put our earth back, we're exceeding these boundaries. We're putting pressure on the earth. Now the earth will survive, but humans may not survive in the numbers that we are today. And so that's why it's important. We have to uh, live within the boundaries of the earth itself. And so sustainability is incredibly important. Now, a model that works is since industry brought us to this point, industry is going to have to bring us back. And so this model works for me. If you think of the earth as this boundary of life support and society exists within that, then what's at the center? What drove industrialization? It's the economy. And so as we come up with solutions for sustainability, it's not enough to just say that we should save the earth because that's good, or we should be altruistic in that. It has to be an economical driver that's pushing that sustainability. Yep. Another term that you'll hear a lot is the idea of an ecological footprint. Since we, I live in a developed country, I'm using more resources on our planet than other people in developing countries. And so as they become developed, that's gonna put even more pressure on the planet. And so that's why this course is incredibly important. It's also why this is unlike the other sciences that you've probably taken. It's not just going to be science. It's going to contain the natural sciences, but it'll also have the social sciences and the human. This is another thing. Like I said, I love this video because all of this 
are issues that we may be touching when we're reaching an audience. Um, you know, uh, again, I like we talked about balancing altruism versus economics. You know, you can't just say, oh, let's stop polluting. Then you're going to put people out of jobs. You know, all of these things are involved in our answers. And as we come up with how we communicate, you can't cover everything. You've got to make some decisions. Humanities as well. So we're going to be talking about science, but also we'll be talking about ethics and law and politics. And so it's really going to be a fun course to walk through. Also, you should remember that this is a science course. And so as we move forward, the AP folks are focusing on the practices of science. So inside the course itself, you should be acting like an environmental science scientist, rather. And so you shouldn't just be learning about environmental sciences. You should be applying it. So if we start with one of these practices, asking questions, conducting investigations, this would be a great field investigation for me to do. So this is the Eastern Gallatin right outside Bozeman. And so I could do studies here on water quality over time, but I could also do studies in the laboratory. I should be doing investigations. And we will be doing today one right in front of us on the Tennessee River. Investigations where I'm coming up with a question and trying to answer that question. Case studies will be incredibly important as well, making these connections between what we've learned in the course. So you're probably familiar with the deep water horizon. There was a fire and that led to this spread of oil. So this fire, eventually there was a breach of the pipe and now we have oil spreading. So to look at where we are, this is in the Gulf of Mexico. This is Florida. And so we're looking at this area right here. You can see so much oil is spread out. And in each of these case studies, there's something happening to the environment. And what I see looking at this map, see this little string? That's the Mississippi River. All of this used to be Louisiana. We have sea rise, and this is ooh, about 10 years ago now. This, we've had ocean rise erosion. It's washed off, you know, maybe 20% of the state of Louisiana. And that certainly has its effects even before the, we look at the oil spill. And so we have to understand all the ramifications of that. And lots of times it takes decades to figure out what really has happened. And then finally, you're going to take an AP exam at the end. And so understanding how that AP exam is important. Well, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about math in this course. But I liked the overview of the issues. Okay, back to where we were. Yeah, that's the syllabus. Here we go. Awesome. Okay. Hello. Where were you? Uh, yes. This is why I prefer an in-person class. Okay. Here we go. Anyway. So those are some of the issues. Now you get to the other side, why this is a challenge is, you know, we come up with some issues, but scientists really loathe what we do. You know, it's inaccurate and, you know, how this article shows how inaccurate information largely in social media has actually affected um, how people look at um, taking care uh, of saving sharks. So you can read that some other time. But inaccurate information has left the public think, oh, it's okay, we should kill sharks, you know. Uh, and the answers are usually more complicated. And this is really the issue. Scientists, and like I said, my dad was a scientist uh, and, and some of my best friends are, uh, they don't like media coverage because it's too sensational. It's um, inaccurate. It's, um, you know, um, you know, um, we don't use the same terminology. And to me, paraphrasing and accuracy 
are not the same thing. A lot of my scientist friends say, you don't use the right words, you're wrong. And it's a real dynamic tension there because you don't cover the whole studies, it can be incomplete. And they complain about that or biased because people are looking for answers. And too often you just naturally drift into advocacy rather than trying to see all aspects. And this is where, quite frankly, uh, a lot of business people don't like science communications because they think it's going to all be for the environmentalists and making, you know, making the business community look like they don't care. And they often do. So, and again, terminology is, is different. Um, okay. So here's an example. I have um, something to look at. This is how it really works. I have here, and it's, it's in there, this is right at the river, right in front of us. Uh, an examination into PCBs and dioxin right in the street in downtown Chattanooga. Does anybody know what either of these things are? Do you know what PCBs are? Well, um, unfortunately I do in my home state of Connecticut. I grew up by the shores of the Housatonic River very famous trout stream, beautiful covered bridges, celebrities live there. Well, in the 60s, the um, General Electric Company uh, used PCBs to insulate transformers, you know, the, the, that you put on the, the, the uh, electric lines. Well, they had a big leak and all this liquid, this kind of greasy liquid went into the river. Um, PCBs were later found to be cancer causing. Dioxins is or are um, weed killers. It's what you got in Roundup. Needless to say, put that in the river, it's not good. So we knew that there were some leakage of PCBs and certainly from uh, agriculture, there was some dioxin. So they started looking at it and we'll go down. Here is our water samples, how much, again, this is where math comes in. I'm not gonna go into it too much. And here's the law, water shall not say, contain toxic substances, whether alone or in combination, that will, re in, a, in other words, you can't have too much. Here is um, what they found. You look at this, hey, it's a chart. No reduction, no reduction required, overall load product reduction is, that's needed. Science people, do you know what this means? Anybody, this is the challenge as a, as a journalist. It means we have a safe level according to the government of dioxins. We don't have too much weed killer, but we have nine times the amount of PCBs in the river than is considered safe levels. So again, here's the challenge here. Okay, maximum daily nodes. Here's description of the watershed. Here's the water. Here is the hydrology in the area. Here is all land use. Here's the water. Here's the city, again, right here, Chattanooga, Chattanooga area, Knoxville's 
not even as developed as we are. Uh, land use, here's the stuff. Uh, problem designated water, we have it here, does it show? No, it's not a link there. Do do that. Do that. Okay. Here's where I was. All right. See that red? That water body's impaired to PCBs and the docks and see it's pretty clear to here and see here's Hamilton County what's there that is the Chickamauga Dam anything below the Chickamauga Dam has impaired due to PCBs and dioxins and there it is we got more than we need Where is it? Uh, PCBs, lots of it. We said nine times the uh, nine times the um, amount. Um, not good. Contaminated sediment. That's where it settles. This says right now. Fishing advisory. If you ever go down to the lake, you will see warnings not to eat the catfish because catfish are bottom dwellers and they get more of that stuff in them because they're eating off the bottom. Uh, how they figured it out, they looked at the fish and where you had not didn't have many in, in in the bass but you had a lot in the carp and in the catfish that's where and a little bit more in the striped bass so yeah carp striped bass uh those are the ones that have the danger levels. They have they have six times the amount of PCBs in the catfish than you do in the bass. Again, we see that again. This is where they did the resources. Here's where they got it. This is how they figured it out. Needless to say, we're not going there. Here is the science part. Implementation plan. As no direct regulatory because it is private property. They can't do that much. There are two options. Avoid disturbing the sediment or um, or remediate contaminated sites, meaning dr dredge up all the sediment. If the, if the sediment must be disturbed, remediation efforts will be necessary to control the load of PCBs. Effectives will, and that will check the effectiveness as it comes up. So there's the story that we have a contaminated lake because of PCBs, dioxins we're okay with, but we have six times, we have nine times the amount of PCBs allowable by um, federal standards. And that's why they have those signs up. So here is a study, let's write a story. This is what we will be doing in our first assignment. I have a much easier, um, I have a much easier um, study 
but this is what I want you to do. Take a study and write a news story. First thing is, and most of you have taken 2300, I hope, or at least you can look at news stories and that you can send me early drafts, but this is what I want you to be able to do. And if you're having trouble with that, I'll go back over it, but here's an example. Anyway, so I'll go back to it. Um, lead, and I'll write it because I'm a news, news writer. The Tennessee River at below the Chickamauga Dam has nine times the amount of polychlorinated biphenyls uh, than federal standards allow according to a report from the Tennessee Department of whatever, of water resources or whatever the official thing is. PCBs are a recognized carcinogen. The report states that That, um, that catfish and carp. Uh, oh, I see. No, no, no. Put that in later. He sees a record. The chemical used in insulation for electrical products um the chemical often settles at the in in order to alleviate the problem, the report suggests two solutions. Either leave the sediment undisturbed and let natural processes cover it, natural processes such as siltation, or actively dredge, particularly affected areas. are particularly um, are particularly toxic poison toxicate whatever particularly um, uh, have In response to the wildlife 
a host of warnings not to eat fish, which is true. Okay, that's the nuts and bolts of the story. You know, from this is what I want you to be able to do this week, and I will save this. Also, look at the uh, look at dioxin toxic or found in found of the dwarf but the agency. Um, in water to have safe levels. Anyway, and you can leaven the uh, story with quotes. Okay, that's the report. Anybody else, what other quotes might you put in? Quotes. You might ask local residents fishing guides, uh, ask environmental agencies or local governments about solutions. At the end of your story for this homework, you can do a little of that. So, this is the challenge that everyone has to do all the time. Taking scientific notes and make it understandable to the public. I know this is a challenge. Anyway, here is what I'm going to ask you to do. Here's, okay. At the end, like I just did, here are some natural resources. I mean, put in list of resources or interviews. I'm not asking you to go out and do interviews or whatever, but just like I did there. Say, what other Just like that. Quotes, local ads. Okay. Other things wasn't there in front of me. I'm not going to ask you to do the same thing. I'm not going to ask you to do a whole bunch of interviews, but this is the challenge here. Here is the one for the homework. A lot easier to work with. There is an abstract hydrological um, cycle is intensified due to global warming. Uh, this is about more water and storms. We are going to have higher uh, precipitation. Ask the people in California about that. Due to different, here's different drivers of extreme precipitation uh, will vary region by region. And here's all the observations that here is where this is what makes it hard. Here is where, let's see, figure one. Here is where things are going to get drier. See, Australia is getting drier. Africa is getting drier. 
uh, American Southwest. We know that, but here is the data that tells us what we already know. Uh, here is temperature. Temperatures, it's getting a lot warmer um, in the United States and Northern Russia. Again, yeah, look at the article. Precipitation. Conclusions. So it's a global warming is. You know, basically, extreme temperatures are going to make uh, their be more liquid in the environment and that's going to cause more storms pretty straightforward stuff and again it shows you where it's going to be and just like what we did in the what i just did in the last report this one's a little easier to read because it tells you right there. Turn this into an accessible news story. Sum this up in 300 words, three to 500 words. Here's your data. Here's your information. Do what we just did with that other story. Send me a draft anytime. Uh, and we can work on it. Again, most of you have taken a writing course. If you haven't, I can provide more examples, but you know what news stories looks like, look like, um, or should. Um, but I just, I just did one right in front of you. Obviously you take the typos out, but that's how it's done. So, huh, 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 huh. welcome to it. This is the challenge. Taking information like this and making it accessible to the public. I'm not asking this for like Pulitzer Prize winning stuff, but this is the challenge that, that um, environmental communicators face every day. So again, I'll take a draft anytime over the next four days, take in an hour to look at it, give me a list at the end, it says so right there on the prompt. Include at the end, a list of re other resources that you may need to fill out the story. I'm not asking you to get an interview, but to, uh, you know, say what else you might need to make a good news story. Ha! Huh. Welcome to the real world. Any questions? Ha, ha, ha. I know it's a lot. When is the first uh, translating like science assignment going to be due? It is due officially. Do, do, do. I say officially I said Friday you know what looking at it's a lot I'll give you to Monday so we can do drafts and things like that and it's available now give you until Monday and go over it try to take that fairly straightforward study turn it into a new story and like I say, I will take drafts until uh, it, it, through the uh, week. Let's see, Tennessee PC. Da, da, da. Where did I save it? The iCloud archive, that's fine. And I will upload this. I'll probably fix it, but 
for your, just so we have the example here. I'll upload this now. Okay. Okay, messy, I may find the time to clean it up, but here's the example it's posted. And I'll, you know, email you a couple of little notes later on this afternoon. Again, now you have really until Monday and I'll look at them Tuesday before class. And then by the end of next week, we'll, I'll have them graded. And like I said, I will take drafts beforehand. Okay. Huh. Well, welcome to it. All right. Other questions? Okay. We are good to go. Uh, hmm. Okay. Stop share. And we're good. Have a lovely week. I will see you online. I appreciate working with you all. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay.